two decades after anonymously donating his reproductive material, a middle-aged meat delivery man learns that 142 of his biological children sued the fertility clinic to uncover his true identity. In 1988, a slacker named David Wozniak donated his reproductive fluid at La France Clinic in Quebec to make extra cash. Fast forward 23 years, he has a debt of $80,000, which is why the debt collectors have invaded his home. In a terrifying encounter, the thugs knock him down and attempt to drown him in the bathtub. Desperate to save his life, the man promises to settle his balance. Afterward, the man quickly gets ready and drives to his family's meat shop, where he works as a delivery man. When David finally arrives at the store, his strict brother informs him that their father is looking for him. In a stern tone, he reprimands the courier for using the delivery truck for personal matters. Later, the delivery man heads to the storefront, where he finds his other brother who just learns he will be a father. After his sibling finishes his call, the delivery man requests assistance growing illegal plants in his small hydroponic garden to help settle his debts. However, his brother declines the offer, explaining that he's already dealing with enough stress due to his pregnant wife. Suddenly, David's father follows up about the soccer jerseys they require for their game that night. In a quick response, the delivery man insists that he already collected them. However, when his family members express doubt, he hastily jumps into his truck and hurries to the sports store to pick up the clothing. With the jerseys secured, David heads to a bookstore to purchase books on hydroponic gardening. Then, the indebted man applies for a loan to gather the funds he needs to pay off his debt, but his attempts are unsuccessful. Later that night, the delivery man receives a call from his family members asking about the jerseys. Despite assuring them that he already has them in the truck, the debt collectors drive away with his vehicle. Consequently, David and his family wear casual clothes for their game photo shoot. Afterward, the courier shows up with flowers at the doorstep of his cop girlfriend Valerie, who feels pissed at him for vanishing without a word. Suddenly, the woman reveals her pregnancy, leaving her partner in shock. Disappointed with David's frequent absences, she firmly states her intention to raise the child independently, as she believes that the delivery man is not fit to be a father. Following this, the indebted man confides in his married lawyer friend who has four children. Upon learning about Valerie's pregnancy, the exhausted father advises the courier to talk with his girlfriend about getting rid of the child. When David mentions his desire for children, the attorney elaborates on how kids demand a lot of energy, time, and money. Despite this, the delivery man remains firm in his decision to keep the child. However, his friend boldly tells him he cannot be a responsible father. The next day, the courier heads to the police station and talks to Valerie, promising her he'll prove his worthiness to parent their child. When David returns home, he surprisingly finds a lawyer named Chamberlain waiting for him inside his apartment. The legal professional reveals that the courier has 533 children as a result of his multiple reproductive fluid donations many years ago. The attorney explains that even though the donor had signed a confidentiality clause before, 142 of his offspring have united in a class action lawsuit to compel the fertility clinic to disclose the real identity of their father, who hides under the alias of Starbuck. Upon hearing this, the donor is in shock, refusing to reveal himself to his biological children. Afterward, David consults his lawyer friend who hands him an envelope containing the profiles of the 142 who joined the lawsuit. Upon returning to his apartment, the uninterested delivery man rejects the idea of being their father and throws the documents in the trash can. Shortly after, the donor changes his mind and opens the envelope, leading him to pick one profile. He brings his attorney friend along and decides to track one of his biological sons, Ricardo Donatelli, a professional soccer ball player. After the event, David credits his genes, pointing out that he feels fulfilled as if an extension of himself won the game. Meanwhile, the attorney thinks about winning their case, suggesting they go for an insanity plea. In response, the delivery man boldly claims that he is not mentally unstable, prompting his friend to advise him to say the same thing if he appears in court so that he could look guilty. The next day, the inspired David attends his soccer practice with his family and plays with great energy, getting his relatives' attention. Later, he heads home and picks another profile, leading him to visit his other son, Etienne, an impolite barista who works at a cafe. When the delivery man advises him to have manners, the frustrated worker complains that he doesn't like his job. The man reveals that he wants to be an actor, but feels disappointed that he will miss a vital audition because he has to work. In response, David volunteers to fill in for the hopeful performer so he could go to his tryout. At first, the employee feels skeptical about his offer and wants to ensure the stranger will not steal the cash.
cash. To assure his sincerity, the donor tosses his truck's keys to his son, advising him to drive the vehicle to his destination. He also explains that he wants to change someone's life. Shortly after his son leaves, David receives a call from his family member, who scolds him for not delivering the meat to the shop. While he's on the call, the cafe owner arrives and threatens him to disclose his identity, recognizing that he doesn't work there. Unfortunately, the businessman decides to fire the barista when the delivery man reveals that he's filling in for him because he has to catch an audition. When Etienne returns, he catches a distressed David waiting outside the cafe. Upon seeing the delivery man's disappointed expression, the barista assumes that he has lost his job, prompting the courier to nod. Surprisingly, the performer happily informs him that he passed the audition and got the part because of his help. After helping his biological son, the courier picks another profile. He then visits the teenager Julie and pretends to be a pizza delivery guy. Upon entering the teen's apartment, he hears her arguing with someone over the phone because of money matters. Out of concern for his broke biological daughter, David tries to console her and tells her she doesn't need to pay for the food. Shortly after, he attempts to walk towards her bedroom when she stops responding, only to see her having an overdose. Quick on his feet, the delivery man takes the teen to a hospital. Upon regaining consciousness, Julie pretends that the courier is her father so that he can sign her release, unaware that he is her dad. However, when the man talks to the doctor, she only offers a program to help the patient quit illegal meds. When David speaks with his daughter about it, the teenager refuses to sign up, claiming she can change her life independently. She then asserts that she can't stay in the facility because she just got her dream job. Upon hearing this, the courier fulfills her wish and signs the release despite the doctor's recommendation not to. After dropping Julie off at her apartment, the delivery man advises her not to ditch her first day of work. In response, the grateful teen promises to be at her office at 8 in the morning. Afterward, she calls him dad and then hugs him for helping her leave the hospital. The next day, David is inside his delivery truck, waiting near his daughter's workplace. After seeing his daughter fulfill her promise, the donor rejoices and feels proud of her. The following morning, the courier discards his illegal plants and meets the rest of his biological children. When he meets his lifeguard's son Marco, he purposely gets himself in trouble so he can save his life. Upon learning one of his children is a tour guide, he watches and applauds his presentation, inciting others to do the same. When the donor meets his busker's son in the subway, he listens to his song, gives him money, and encourages others to give him tips. He also meets his son who works at a grocery store, and gives him extra cash after asking for help. Upon encountering his drunkard offspring, David helps him get a taxi and carries him home. He also avails the services of his beautician daughter just to bond with her. After his productive day, the donor informs his lawyer friend that he plans to be the guardian angel of his biological children. The following day at work, the delivery man's brother, whose pregnant wife had just given birth, shares his happy experience about being a father. Afterward, he encourages the delivery man to be a dad too. When David is about to leave the meat shop, he hops in his vehicle and surprisingly finds Valerie in the passenger seat, asking him to accompany her to her first ultrasound as a friend. After the appointment, they head to a playground full of children. As they watch the kids, the pregnant woman worries about being a parent when she thinks kids are annoying. In response, the courier assures her she will be a good mother. Upon sensing his genuine support, she finally agrees to acknowledge him as their child's father and raise the baby together. Following this, David returns home and picks another profile, leading him to meet his son Raphael who is in an institution. The delivery man takes care of his impaired son for a short time, prompting the receptionist to praise him for doing a good job. Afterward, the donor stalks one of his children and follows him when he attends an event at a hotel. Sitting among the crowd, he recognizes the participants and realizes he is in a conference with the 142 children who joined the class action lawsuit. While David rises in shock, a man offers him a microphone, mistaking him for a participant who wants to ask a question. Seizing the opportunity, the delivery man takes a moment to tell everyone that he loves them without disclosing that he is their father. After the event, Julie, Etienne, and Marco recognize him, prompting him to pretend that he's the adoptive father of Raphael who cannot attend the event. Following this, David heads out of the building and encounters his lawyer friend spying on him. The legal professional then informs him that the psychologist sees his client as stable, which makes their chances of winning in court slim. The attorney then suggests his friend prove his insanity by admitting he married a woman he didn't know. However, the courier dismisses him, claiming he's doing the right thing to see 
his children. Upon returning home, David finds the collectors inside his apartment and attempts to drown him in the tub for being unable to pay his debt. Later after the thugs leave, he surprisingly finds the vegetarian emo Antoine, one of his biological sons who figured out that he is his father after his appearance at the conference. The teenager interrogates him about his profession and life and eventually gets attached to him. When the adolescent declares that he'll expose him, the donor pleads with him not to. Following this encounter, David notifies his lawyer friend, who recommends that he just do what the teenager says to avoid getting in trouble. Afterward, the delivery man takes Valerie to their home to introduce her to his family and celebrate the arrival of their child. While eating, the father shares a story of how the delivery man paid all the expenses so that his whole family could vacation in Venice. Upon hearing this story, the pregnant woman becomes teary-eyed, touched by his partner's gesture. While walking home, Valerie asks his boyfriend how he could get the money to afford the vacation. However, he prefers not to disclose it as he earned the cash from donating his reproductive fluid. Later that day, David prepares for his game while Antoine sits on his couch reading a book. He invites him to join his soccer game to bond with his biological son, which he happily accepts. That night, the emo teen plays for the first time but catches the ball with his hands instead of his feet. Following this, the courier praises the adolescent for his efforts, pointing out that he got better after finally getting the mechanics. Afterward, the rookie invites his father to a gathering in the lake that weekend, an event his biological siblings had organized. However, the delivery man declines, explaining his plans with his real family. Upon hearing this, Antoine feels offended and asserts that his biological children are his real family too. As a result, David lies to his girlfriend so he can accept the teen's invitation. When he arrives at the gathering, the courier surprisingly finds an organized camp. When the donor asks the teen if he has revealed his identity to his genetic siblings, the adolescent explains that he has been keeping their secret. Following this, David spends a beautiful time with his biological children. They sunbathe, eat good food, and gather around a bonfire by the night. As a kind gesture, the delivery man picks up Raphael from the institution so he can join his brothers and sisters while watching the sunrise. After this, he returns his impaired son to the facility and discreetly tells him he is his dad. Later that day, David visits his lawyer friend, who hands him a tabloid featuring the gathering of Starbucks children. Agitated, the legal professional explains that the news will make the masses curious about the donor's identity, which can affect the chances of winning the case. As a solution, the attorney suggests they do a countersuit and sue the clinic for libel. He excitingly informs that the delivery man can get enough money to pay his debt if they win in court. Upon hearing this, the man thinks it's a bad idea and claims he wants to reveal himself to his genetic children. However, the lawyer warns him about what people are saying about him. The following day, David listens to the radio and learns that people consider him mentally unstable for bringing so many children into the world. He also discovers that his pseudonym Starbuck is all over the newspapers. When the delivery man asks Valerie what she thinks of the issue, she describes the man as a perv and explains that it's not normal to have 533 children. Before their soccer game, David prepares with his teammates who are talking ill about the famous donor. Suddenly, the brother turns to the delivery man and confronts him if he had donated his reproductive fluid when he lived next to a fertility bank. He then teases his sibling that he might have done it since the delivery man tended to self-pleasure a lot when he was young. Upon hearing this, the pissed David rises and angrily tells his sibling to cut it out. Later in the meat shop, the brothers inform the courier that thugs attacked their dad and threatened to drown him in the bathtub because of his debt. As a result, David agrees to file a countersuit to get the cash and pay his balance. Starbucks children attend during the trial while the lawyer represents the hiding donor. After a few days, the legal professional receives a call that the ruling is in. In court, the judge explains that Starbuck is entitled to his anonymity and that the LaFrance Clinic will have to pay $200,000 for the damages and interest. Upon hearing this in the news, David rejoices. However, while his lawyer friend speaks, the attorney accidentally mentions David in his gratitude speech. Upon realizing this, he quickly twists his story and explains that David is his romantic partner, which relieves the courier. Meanwhile, the biological children of Starbuck are disappointed with the verdict and hope their father will reveal his identity to them alone. He clarifies that despite what the media paints their dad to be, they think of him as someone who gives happiness and life to people who need it. Afterward, David meets his lawyer and asks if he will lose his money from the countersuit if he reveals his identity. However, the lawyer suspects that he will if he does so. Following this, the donor speaks with his dad and admits he is Starbuck, but hesitates to reveal himself publicly because 
because he would lose the money to pay his debts. In response, David's kind father shares his story of when he moved to Canada for a better life. His dad gave him $10, the only money he had left. He took the money and promised to pay it a thousand times over when he became successful. However, he couldn't fulfill this because he was still poor when his dad passed away. As a result of what happened, he realized how important it was to be beside his loved ones during difficult times instead of giving them what they wanted. He explains that his most outstanding achievement is always being with his children. To help his son, the old man gives the courier $10 just like his dad gave him. After that, he hands him a paper bag containing his inheritance from their meat shop. Following this, David smiles but fears that revealing his true identity will disappoint his children. He worries they will look down on him because he's a meat delivery guy. However, his dad clarifies that he's lovable and people will love him wherever he goes. Immediately after this, the courier emails a new station and informs them that he's the person behind the alias Starbuck. Then, he goes to Valerie's house to tell her the truth, only for him to discover that she is about to give birth. After his girlfriend's delivery, David touches his baby for the first time and feels happy. The following day, the nurse awakens him and informs him that he has some visitors. Walking along the hallway, he gazes at the window and sees his biological children clapping for him. When he reaches downstairs, the donor sees his father and two brothers who openly hug him. Following this, his biological children join the hug. Then, he formally introduces himself as their father and announces they have a new baby brother. Afterward, David returns to the room and asks for Valerie's hand in marriage. When the woman accepts and kisses, is him, the courier suddenly admits that he is Starbuck, prompting her to back away. Upon seeing his fiancé's disappointed face, the man clarifies two things. First, he is the father of their child and the man behind Starbuck, and there's nothing she can change about it. Second, his proposal is genuine, implying his true love for her. After hearing her partner's honest statements, Valerie smiles and kisses the delivery man passionately, asking him to bring her to Venice someday. Shortly after, David's biological children give their gifts to their new brother. Following this, the courier hugs his children one by one. On the other hand, Antoine gives him an emo-looking plush toy on behalf of his other real family. Following this, the courier's genetic offspring gather around the subway to listen to their busker brother's song. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.